Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today I have this computer here. It was donated as part of a collection uh, to a friend of mine. Uh, we host LAN, Brain Drain, we call it. And uh, what usually happens is that none of us have enough space for all of them. So if there is a donation, we tend to split it. So out of the photos I got sent to me, I picked this one out. And the photos were very tiny from uh, whoever donated, I guess. Uh, pretty much resolution predating the smartphone. So on the back side of this was like a sticker and I kind of figured out it should be a Pentium 2. And I don't have a Pentium 2. I had in back in the day, I mean used ones. So I figured I picked this one because I kind of like the accent here. And the case overall just looks like uh, something could be interesting. So let's power this up. Uh, it kind of works. I have tested it because an you know, explosive test. Uh, it has issues. So let's see here. I can't guarantee it will start, but we will try. And what you're hearing is the GPU fan. It's uh, very broken. We've got signal on the screen here. See if we can pause here. You might already see it, but I'm gonna zoom in on the screen here, you're gonna see something. So like you can see here, we got the graphic corruption all over the screen here. It's actually worse than usual. Uh, I have a theory for that. But you can see what's supposed to be a Pentium. Uh, Pentium 2 MX at 400 Hz. Uh, yeah, so I just paused it here. I'm going to the BIOS. And like I said, uh, the GPU fan uh, sounds like this. So it looks fairly normal. Sometimes this is also corrupted. It's a little bit weird. Yeah, I think we can try to do a reset here and see if it's still corrupted. Yeah, so we got the GPU 2 MX400. Yeah. So as you can see now, the corruption is kind of gone. I'm going to pause again. But I don't know how well this picks up, but the, the, the text is like shimmering and going sideways. Uh, I've seen this on the Voodoo 5 I did, with bad, really bad caps, with a lot of like uh, ripple, the caps, the caps are bad. So I've got graphical issues on this machine, and also, yeah, EFO 2 MX400 isn't uh, fitted correct for this machine. So I'm gonna turn this machine off now, because that fan on the GPU is actually hardly turning, it's mo more vibrating in a, than anything else. Let's go over this machine a little bit. So in the front we've got two optical units, as you can see, one is a DVD for sure. Set some that on it and uh, floppy. What I like about this case, like I said, is the accent here, just looks a little bit unique. Also, don't know what ACWS uh, is, if it's a brand, or if it's like, like a system builder here in Sweden. This uh, system came out of, well, I pick, picked it up in Halmstad, Sweden. I have a suspicion, so I think this, it was the same guy who donated the uh, Octane, SGI Octane, I think might be built or come, come from there. But I can't find anything on Google, and considering this is the 90s, I might not even actually have a web page uh, back in like 98 or whenever this was built. So at the back here, first when I saw it, it was figure like 80, but when I saw the back uh, and the sticker here, the six sticker I had to do, uh, like I said, the CSI in Miami, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> photo enhancements to figure out what it was. But yeah, it's, it's supposed to be a Pentium 2 400 and 20 megs of RAM. A TNT one card with the uh, well, just TNT then, 60 megabytes. Uh, then there's supposed to be um, some kind of MPEG 2 card here, PCI. And uh, I think, yeah, some lost uh, 128 according to this. And then a modem. And I'll, uh, you, you can see if you look into here that this is an ISA card, so this, this sound card is not uh, a sound lost 128. So I suspect that it was probably sitting around here and probably the. Uh, the daylight modem too. Someone probably ripped them out because... So th this is the MPEG-2 card I would guess then. Because of the extra output here, the VGA here. And yeah, it's obviously the power supply is vertically mounted instead of horizontal. That's just like pro and con, but if this is a Pentium 2, which it should be, I've been into it. And look, this is a Pentium 2 still. It's not that bad because uh, the way the coolers and stuff mounts. It's a pretty compact case and one thing I liked about it. Uh, it could be shorter, but uh, otherwise it's pretty compact. So let's open it up and have a look inside. And let's take this system part and see what we have inside of here. So we can start down here. 
the sound card. Some of you probably know what it is. So here we have the sound card. So this is a let's say CT something number somewhere. Yeah. CT is a 3990. So it's essentially it's an A32. I kind of been looking for one. I had one, a chance to pick one up, like pick one out of a bunch of cards when I did some work for uh, my friend who I picked this up at. But I picked the Samuel 16 back then, and I still kind of prefer Samuel 16s. But yeah. Now I got the A32 also, but I think this is too new, uh, too old actually for this system. It's not uh, supposed to be there, so I have a better option actually. So you're not gonna use this, but I think this will be its own video. So I'm restoring this to nice condition. It's probably working, but I think uh, just map it out a recap. Bought some caps for this. Down here we got the MP2 car. So it's called Real Magic uh, DVD. I have fixed the driver and everything for it, but it's supposed to have a pass-through cable similar to some of the 3 dfs cards I have. Uh, you run that into this one, and then it connect your monitor here. So this is intended to basically decode MPEG-2 when you play DVD movies on the system. It's kind of I don't have a cable. I could probably build one, but it's not proprietary cable. So yeah, I don't think we're gonna use this in the system because I don't think I could be playing DVD movies on it. So the last card here is the GeForce 2 MX400. I'll take that out. A couple of issues there. So the card itself is uh, obviously broken because the fan hardly runs. Like it's it got stuck badly when I ran it. And right now it's just lubed up, but with it. It feels like it's spinning freely, but uh, the bearing is a sleeve bearing and it's so worn out that the fan is wobbling so much it just seizes up, seizes up and runs really slowly like this. That's why it sounds so bad, because it's more or less vibrating. I noticed artifacting is usually less if I disconnect the fan. So I suspect bad caps on this, but uh, might be worse, I don't know. It's pretty yellow on the back side here. It's hard to see, but uh, yeah, uh, both uh, the voltage regulator here, the, the GPU has this color, the PCB, because uh, I took the fan off and checked, and uh, the sticker has been off before, so I think someone has lubed the fan before, so I don't think it's the first time the fan got stuck. So yeah, this card might have suffered permanent overheating damage, I'm not sure. So we're not going to use this card, uh, it might be its own video if it's repairable, I'm going to check on that, uh, diagnose it. So I can do a video on this separately if there's any interest in that. But uh, yeah, I have a, a better graphics card for this system. And with the system to actually get, say, the power supply out, you have to remove the motherboard tray. So to do that, you have to, re to remove the screws for the add-on cards. But we have already removed them, so that's not the problem. And there's a screw at the back here that was actually missing. And I mentioned the graphics card has some issues other than there's some issues, but one of them is uh, the fact that it doesn't want to go into the AGP slot properly. And I figured it was because of the missing screw, but that's not the case. Uh, put that in, because this has a removable backplane. So we have to actually like take the motherboard out this way to get the power supply out, because there is a ledge here and you can't pull the power supply up in any way, or even forward, because there's another stop there. So you have to, at least, at the very least, tilt the whole motherboard out of it. So you have to pull it forward now. Should be possible. But the problem with the graphics card, like I mentioned before, is it goes somewhere along here. Problem is that this plate, this uh, motherboard back plate, is not stiff enough. So when you push the graphics card in, it uh, actually doesn't seat properly in the slot. So <laughs> the card makes the system not post a lot of the time, because it's not fully seated. So you kind of have to push like this, and put your graphics card in, if you want it to be seated. So that took me a while to figure out why the system was posting one day and not the other. Because I, I did want to know if it worked, and uh, yeah. First time it worked, second time not so much. And someone has been gluing everything in place, which is also a bit annoying. So, but uh, yeah, cold winter weather here now in Sweden, and all melt glue. So 
that's not really that stuff. It's uh, mostly annoying that I have to clean off all the connectors from it. So let's get the motherboard out of the system. can take the power supply out with the motherboard out of the way. Now I have the computer stripped to its bare bones and the reason for that is that I want to do a complete haul over of the system and try to restore it back to somewhat of original state. So we're gonna look at what we're gonna put in it and what we're gonna do. But uh, we're gonna do some modification to the case also. There is a place for an 8 minute fan in the front here, but uh, like a lot of old cases, there is, uh, let's see if you can see here. You can see here, there, very little room here for air to come in. It's also the same. Uh, uh, the metal sheeting inside. So I'm gonna take this off later is the plan. And we're gonna put an 80mm fan here. So I actually bought two 80mm Sunons on sale, about five bucks each. I got, uh, they were on rebate uh, on sale and then I got 10% off uh, on everything. Uh, yeah, so I bought two for a reason because we want, I think I want to put the other one in the power supply because every fan in the system makes very noise. Uh, I think it's a lot of running hours. So we have new fans, one for the case, one for the power supply. With the system apart, uh, we got uh, the motherboard here, which is a Soltec. Uh, it's not a, probably my least favorite brand, but it is what it is. So uh, it's a Soltec SL67B. So it's supposed to be a decent motherboard, but uh, for example, it doesn't have voltage control for the CPU, like manual. It's a BX uh, motherboard, a 440. So. Theoretically, it can go to 133 megahertz bus, officially 100. So we have a Pentium 2 400 in here. So the plan is to actually replace the cooler on the Pentium 2 for once, because I think the fan is kind of noisy. We can have a listen to it, I can connect it up to my power supply here. So yeah, I think that uh, fan has been spinning for a long time. They shouldn't sound that bad. And the bearings are pretty worn in this one. To, to actually replace this heatsink with a new one, or well, a used one, and uh, it's a slightly used fan uh, from a much modern, more modern system, I pick it out of, the, out of a power supply. To actually replace uh, this heatsink, there are screws that are also slight rivets, you have to screw them out and if they won't come out you have to drill them out. So to do that safely you usually take the CPU apart. And uh, there's also a couple of other reasons you might want to take the CPU apart. And that is that the cache is supposed to, technically, was designed to interface with, the, with, with an IHS. And it's not, I checked, uh, I took the CPU out a while ago, but it's a bit fiddly. But I checked it uh, didn't do that and the paste might actually be so old that it is throttling. They can, I think the clock, is, maybe clock skip to keep the temperature down. So we should probably replace the CPU. So having it apart, uh, we can replace it and uh, remove the old heatsink here that is like semi-riveted. And put this on that we can actually replace the fan on. And they will use these hooks that goes into slots here instead. So anyone familiar with, with uh, slot one knows what I'm talking about. I haven't used slot one that much, and it was over 20 years ago I actually did uh, did this kind of disassembly of a uh, pension two. And for the motherboard, I actually bought some upgraded caps here. These are 1500 microfarads. I bought them 1800. 
Some tantalums over here and here. There are a total of four, I think, and the whole motherboard is one over here. And I do really hate them. They give me nightmares when they explode. So yeah, it's probably fine. I mean, they're probably fine. They work now and I don't think they're gonna go bad. But uh, I have uh, this idea that I could put some uh, uh, 10 microfarad polymers here instead with uh, very low ESR. Just to modernize it a bit, I guess. And I, I prefer polymers over tantalums if I can have that. So I bought that for those. So the motherboard is gonna get a recap. I picked the 832 out of the system, which is obviously not original. Uh, the footage I had uh, during this assembly was really out of focus. Uh, it was my fault. Uh, my camera is also not that good at focusing, sadly. So this is the 832. I'm gonna probably do uh, its own video on this one, I figured. So I'm not gonna use this because someone clearly replaced the Sound Blaster 128 with this. And I don't want the Sound Blaster 128 either. I don't have that. So I think this is gonna go in like a 486 or something. Instead, I think we're gonna use this, uh, A64. My friend had an A64 uh, factory installed in his Pentium 2 machine back in the day. And I think it's a lot more appropriate, considering what I have. And this is fully restored, it's upgraded to 2 megabytes. It has really nice caps, new audio jacks, and no, no bad connection. And it's been looking for a home for a while. I think this is the perfect home for it. The graphics card was this GeForce 2 MX400. Uh, it's a 64 megabyte card, so it's worth saving, I think, if we can do that. But it's not period correct, and it's uh, kind of annoying that the TNT that was supposed to be in there wasn't in the system. So we're gonna put this aside. And if you watched my previous video, you know I have a TNT now. It was donated with that heatsink from Axel, uh, viewer of the channel. So this is tested working now, and uh, yeah, I got some repairs and new caps. I bought a fan for this card. With the sound card already capped, uh, same with the graphics card, and we're gonna do the motherboard. I want to, like I said, do some upgrading of some caps there, change out the type and up the capacity on some of them. I figured I could recap the power supply too, because, well, the system is from the 90s, like 98 probably. So I think in this video we'll start with this uh, PSU, just the fresh up some with new caps and a new fan, so it's uh, as quiet as it can be, and uh, and we have a low ESR like caps in it for low ripple because uh, like the graphics card would run straight up three volt line on this 2.3 volt line, same with the memory. So for this project, I bought uh, an adapter since the hard drive didn't come with the system. I bought a SATA to IDE adapter. Uh, I used a lot of these before, they're really good, they're Marvel based, so they're reliable, you can jump for them, Master Slave, and so on, and they support up to 8A133, so that's, this is a lot faster, this adapter, than what this system is capable of, since we're limited to 8A33, on a Pension 2 BX motherboard. Uh, I bought a, like I said, fan for the graphics card, a fan for the case, and power supply. And a lot of caps. It's not all the caps we need, but it's uh, some of them. It's also for some other systems. And I actually spent my first YouTube shake of like $75 or something like that on this. Plus some audio caps for the uh, AVE. For this card here. It's for a few future video. So yeah, thanks to the people who gave us super tank. Thanks and... Uh, Watch my videos and uh, yeah, live through the YouTube ads, I guess. So yeah, ha at least half of this is paid by the ad revenue. So let's get to some uh, PSU recapping and refurbing. So the plan here is to recap this, uh, all the caps and a new fan. So the reason for this is some would argue you're recapping a motherboard, fancy caps, not necessarily me, but someone, and then run an old crappy power supply and I would argue yes uh, why you do the motherboard not the power supply now what I usually do is I try to actually source modern power supplies for most of my builds since they are not like a complete system a lot of the time so I can just buy something new that fits or I can buy new stock or I can buy something used but uh, that is a lot newer or I can reuse, like I do sometimes, take my old power supplies out of my modern machines, like a Corsair AX750. It has a lot of 
power on the five and triple three volt rail still not as much as the real old ones but it's, it's good enough for most things but um, since this power supply is fully working fairly simple so not too many caps and stuff i figure why not just recap it new fan and uh, then this should be good to go for a long time and like i said the graphics card runs off the power supplies uh, 2.3 volt race same with the ram so i do think this would be nice to have some quality caps i got some uh, panasonic fr the, the low sr series and i think one fm here and then i got some older words for some minor stuff here but for the main rails it's all gonna be f4 or fm uh, panasonic so that should offer really low esr before we take apart the power supply and recap it i do want to point out that you can kill yourself going into these because the main caps can be charged and they can contain voltages close to 400 volts i my record that i measured in a power supply was 366 volts and can do the math and should be a little bit lower but there was a lot of inductors before it and the way it worked is that it would uh, cut off dc at some point when it didn't sense an ac and keep the cap charged for a long time so there is the pos potential that you could harm yourself opening these and touching in the wrong place and yeah we did the run the system before so i have to be careful and i'm gonna have a warning down below like on the text when i'm working with the power supply just in case someone scrolls through the video so they will have a warning down below too. So anyway, let's open up this power supply and uh, see what we have inside. So yeah, what you should never, you should never assume a power supply is discharged. Like the caps have discharged, even if you push the power button at the front, uh, it doesn't work on all of them. So on this power supply here, these are the main caps. They are rated on this one at 200 volts, I think. Yeah, so they should be in series, we can see that later. But sometimes you have 400 or 420, 4, 4, uh, 450 rated ones. So here is where the poten real potential of uh, danger is because you got usually got an AC side and a DC side of the PCB. So I wouldn't grab anything around here. And ideally you want to use a screwdriver made intended for Working with high voltages, uh, the shaft should be have a plastic sleeve. I don't have one. I have a multimeter out set to 600 volts. Uh, so we can get this out. I'm just gonna try. I use just use the cable. Try to turn over the PCB here. I'm just gonna check the cap. This is one cap here, and then there should be another cap over here. We could have, expect up to 400 volts technically from the capacity, like, uh, the voltage rating, but that's not going to be that case. But over 300, we could see. But I'm getting nothing right now here, which is uh, old power supply. Like this I do expect it to discharge. So this power supply should now, for all intents and purposes, be safe to work on. I concluded there is no voltage on the main caps. I'm gonna put some of this annoying glue on here. I'm just removing the fans, so I'm going to replace it anyway. Plus, I want to check the specs for it. should probably do that before I bought fans, but uh, most of the time they are around 3000 RPMs, and the ones I got are 2600. I think they'll be fine. Back in the day, we tend to put resistors on the fan to make them less noisy. This one should be temperature control according to the label on the PCU, so I think they have some circuitry for that. The Pension 3, dual Pension 3 build I did, also had power supply doing that. So I think we're gonna test run this on my bench supply and see how low this starts, like the lowest starting voltage. I would expect it to be five, but we'll see. Then I'm gonna do the same to do the same sooner. Just to see if they have a similar starting voltages. I'm gonna put the fan up to the microphone and see if you can hear the bearing noise. So 
So yeah, hopefully you heard that. I'm gonna fix it in editing otherwise. But it has, uh, it's it probably, well, if it had ball bearings, it would say ball bearings. I think this is sleeved. The new one is ball bearing. Uh, bag level would be better, but. To make it easier to work on this, I think we're gonna desolder these, but they are also, also glued uh, with that crappy glue. So I'm actually gonna start by removing these caps here because it's gonna make my life easier getting to, especially this one. And the cable should be around here, so we can get it out. I think the cable is free technically, but there's the glue to deal with. Also, like I think I said in my Pension 3 video where I had to the cap apart from due to the bad caps, those uh, bad Yamicons. Uh, apparently, this glue here gets conductive, it's a known problem, apparently. It's ages. So, I really don't want that glue to like go from, say, high voltage to DC or something, basically, from one potential to another. That's the last cable free for the high voltage easy side. So it's just gonna be a lot easier now to work on this uh, to replace the caps. I took the opportunity to mark up the caps. I know what uh, are the old caps. I don't mix up old and new because they're quite small and cramped in there. So I guess we just start uh, replacing the small ones I think and then we save the big ones for last. So my plan here is just to take out one at a time and replace uh, because I don't have exact I haven't documented exactly what this wear uh, could. So I got an ESO of around 2.3 ohms. Let's see what the replacement has. Or if I should pick something else. 1.27, so 1 ohm less. The problem is the transformer and heatsink is so much in the way here. So I'm going to do the one out here now, I think, and I don't know why it looks like crap behind here, if that just flux or something, or that cap somehow has leaked through, but uh, I don't know how it would get through. It makes no sense. So it's probably just flux. to wick that I think because they are short right now to be very careful there so you don't have that later 
very small space in between here. So I think that's all the small caps replaced, so essentially the big ones left to do. I can probably start out with this one here. I actually forgot to buy that one, but I uh, can go through that one. This is a 470 microfarad one over here. So it's rated 470 microfarad and 25 volts. And uh, you maybe can't see it, but this, the, the white one is minus 5 and the blue one is minus 12. We know that uh, by looking at the ATX cable, plus it also says on the PCB here. And uh, if you follow that cable, this blue one, we have a diode and we have a cap. And on the back side, we can see that they are connected here. So cable comes in over here, diode, cap, and this big crosshair is the ground plane over here. So that goes over to all of these here, which is the ground. So I have actually, before we disassemble it, I did actually measure both on uh, this side of the diode, but also on the other one, and we have like minus 11.6 or something. So, because I don't have a 25 volt rated uh, 470, but I have different variants of uh, 16 volts, we can actually use that. I don't know why they use 25, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's uh, obviously extra safety margin, it only means how much, uh, it tells you how, how voltage the cap can take. But for example, this cap over here, big one over here, is for the 12 volt rated positive one, and it's only 16 volt rated. So, and that's pretty common. So there's there's no reason you need a 25 volt over here. A 16 volt rated would do just fine. So instead of paying out for shipping and uh, all of that, trying to buy just a cap or a bunch of caps, because uh, my budget is already blown by twice. Uh, but anyway. So we're gonna put a 16 volt rated 470 there, a uh, pretty good one because I did find the uh, FM caps, which is also Panasonic uh, FM, um, and yeah, it's way shorter, it's like half. I'm not really have 12 and a half, and that's 20. But um, if I had bought the 25 volt version, it would be like we can still get it in the same size, and you can also get one in uh, 60 millimeters. So. If I want 20 mm, I would have said to go down to 8 mm diameter, and this is 10. So they, they are just not that big anymore, even at 25 volts. There are brands you can obviously get that size, but uh, not the, like the Panasonic low ESR ones uh, that I wanted. So we're gonna go with this uh, 16 volt instead. Uh, it has like the second lowest ESR. If I bought it, it would probably have been a second on my list. Uh, so it's only negative 12, we're gonna have that for cellular ports and ISA, so the sound blaster, the A64. It's gonna use that, that's the only thing really gonna use that. It could be nice, or have nice filtering for the negative 5 for the sound card. So you shouldn't really downgrade the voltage rating unless you confirm that it can do so, which I did in this case. For some reason I did I had nothing that was 25 volt rated. There was high same or higher, so the only thing I had was lower.
So let's get the big ones out. I think. Uh, I think we'll take out all the big ones at once. They aren't that difficult to uh, place in the wrong way. I have pictures also, plus there's prints on the PCB. And we will obviously double check everything once it's done. So there's a lot of glue, well a lot of it, but enough to make them stubborn to get out. This big one is a 6.3 volts and 2200 microfarads. I'm gonna put in 2700 because I need it on a couple of motherboards. Uh, so I bought 10 of those instead, so I upgraded them. Because uh, it's cheaper to do that. We get, uh, it's cheaper to buy 10 than buy say 8 or even 6 I think, because it was, uh, you get rebate like a, like a ladder. So when you get up to 10, you get rebate, and I think next is like 50 something, or 100, but anyway. More glue. This one is a little bit bigger. It's uh, 6.3, no, 12. <laughs> I mean, 16 volts and uh, 2200 microfarads. So that's for the 12 volt tray. So that should be all the caps out, and uh, we can see the orientation too down here. There's like a uh, ticket line around the circuit here. That's uh, where the negative goes. So, like I said, these are uprated uh, 2700, 6.3. Uh, like I said, because it was cheaper to do that. Because I needed some 2700 and some 2200s, and uh, I think it was like 6 or 8 combined, so buying 10 is actually cheaper. <laughs> uh, due to the discount you get. Could use the bigger tip now, but I'm lazy, so I'm not gonna swap it. Oh, that's all the 2700s, the new ones. So this is still as original 2200, but it's rated 25 volts instead of 60. <laughs> so kind of opposite to that one. But the 12 volt isn't particularly strong on this power supply and uh, not used by much, much. It's CPU and stuff like that is 5 volts. So. So that is the like secondary side caps, so the DC side. Uh, the primary side is the AC side, it's obviously still uh, rectified, full bridge rectifier. And it should be here, that one. So only thing left to do is put back the caps, now the question is use the old ones or use the new ones. Uh, I did measure the old ones, they were like 480 microfarads and the new ones were like 450. So the high capacity old ones, like uh, you get plus minus 20%. On those but the voltage leakage was like half the new ones and the new ones are rated at 105 c i bought new ones i suppose if i put them in and we do everything as i said the graphics card is done the sound card is done we do the motherboard and everything is done i think i put the new ones in I can save the old ones for something if i want to but 
I also like any KFC was horribly bad. It's more. I want uh, like lower ESR if I can, so I can get hopefully less ripple and stuff to my components. But uh, yeah, the AC side caps, these big ones are usually not bad. They can go bad. I had a uh, power supply in subwoofer where they went bad. So when I came home, the subwoofer was playing like 100 hertz because you should have a full bridge rectifier there too. And uh, so like 100 hertz, <laughs> neighbors were not that happy. So I've, I've seen uh, primaries go bad, but it's very rare. But yeah. So I honestly don't know if these are better than the old ones, but newer at least. But from my googling, the brand should be fine. So and a lot of times I don't do these because it's like the the problem is twofold. Like the bigger the caps, the more expensive they are. But also finding caps that fits. Uh, it's the problem because they usually like a service is around there. There's no margin. I have to do something about that then same thing there So sure if there were slightly narrower and taller would probably not be a problem a lot of the times You have to buy something and you have to have the same dimensions or Like when I did the Mac power supply just slightly ever slightly taller. I got away with but <laughs> just barely Just don't want to drench this in solder, so I get a pool on the other side. So I think that's the power supply. I'm gonna clean the back side a bit, but there shouldn't be any more stuff to replace here. Let's get everything back together. So let's uh, test some fans. So first up is the old one. Uh, I tried to find uh, this particular model, and I did find. Uh, slightly weak version. They have some number, but 0 12 amp. This is 0 15 amps, and the 0 12 one was 2500 RPM. And our new fan should be 2600. So I'm like, I'm guessing this is probably 3000 RPM. This one, the old one here. So I'm gonna put it on this pad there just to not pick up. Uh, it's gonna vibrate a lot on the desk if it just sits on the desk. And yeah, I'm gonna hook up power to it. So I got the uh, lab power spot over there. So you're gonna check starting voltage and also like current draw, stuff like that. So I'm gonna turn on a power supply and uh, can actually, we have it set to 12 volts now, so we can actually test the current draw. Should be able to hear that if I do it like this. So depending on the angle here, we got bearing noises. Standing straight up, we got uh, some annoying bearing noises, and we got 12 volts. Like I said, we got 0 0.13 amps, 130 milliamps. So now if we do like this, set the voltage really low. Start there. So now we've got the voltage running, we've got the uh, 1.7. So I'm just gonna turn this up until it starts. And it starts at 3.4 volts, so that's very low actually. So let's replace this fan with the new one. And output voltage, so we're going in reverse now. You can see the starting voltage here, see what that could be. 2.6. So even lower than the other one. But both had very good uh, starting voltages. So let's put this up to 12 volts. So 90 milliamps, so a little bit lower draw. I would say I think this is noisier when the bearing isn't audible, uh, quite right on, but it's uh, 
more or less the same but there's no bearing noise so that's nice and, um, the, and both of them having such low starting voltage, this one having even lower is good. I just want to make sure the fan starts. So yeah, let's install the new fan and see how that works. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move this cable over to this fan. Instead of uh, splicing and ugly stuff like that, much better to just move, move them over. You can't always do this, they have this tendency nowadays to... Uh, in case uh, the wiring like in plastic so you can't get to them and they even do that with the bearings sometimes nowadays you can't replace the ball bearings if you want to do but anyways there's no problem on this one so we're just gonna remove uh, the cables here and put some new ones on or well put the old ones on <laughs> remove the new ones put the old ones on So we're just going to remove all this lead free solder here. So, oh, fan checks out. It's time to put the power supply back together. First, though, I want to put the plastic shim here on this uh, 110 and 230 volt selector. Uh, it's pretty common to fill them with epoxy from the outside so people can't blow the computer up. I'm putting it at 110 volts here in Sweden. So, I figured out that when it's open now, I can make like a transparent plastic shim to put there. And the uh, yeah, so you keep the originality, you can restore it if you want to, for some reason, send the computer over to the States. So yeah, it looks like you could adjust it if you wanted to, but, uh, well, that's a piece of plastic in the way now. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky to solder back the wire because you don't want some weird tension on it or anything. So, a bit of contraption here. Just turn it up like this. It should allow me to solder back the first of the main AC wires. Let's see if we get the last one in here. They are in here and over here. So I have checked all the oil tension of all the caps. I made some measurement for looking for shorts. I know shorts. So so far so good. And we need to put this one in so we don't forget. That should be that. And we can put this one in. So let's put this one in here.
So that's the power supply recapped. Uh, the ones I really wanted to recap was the ones here on the DC side for the 5 volt and the 3.3 volt rail. And the rest are basically a bonus. Uh, there won't be any really bad caps, I think, in this one, especially not the primaries. But uh, yeah, it's fully recapped, new uh, fan. The thing left to do now is to test the thing. The power supply is uh, well, not connected to mains power yet. We have a short extension here I use for my hot plate. So the power supply on the back is the switch is on. We got this one. I'm not sure if it's on or off, but it should be off. So this is basically an AT adapter with the switch here, so we could turn it on. Uh, if it's gonna blow, it usually happens. Uh, when you connect the mains. I think I've blown up like two power supplies in my life uh, hooking up the power. And also this way I don't have to touch it as it's just in case it's for some reason the case would be energized to mains uh, 230 volts. And apparently the switch was on. That was terribly unexciting. I suppose that's a good thing. So, now that it didn't blow up, which is a good thing, we can check some voltages maybe. Five volt is 5.21, it's a bit high, but we don't have much of any load. Yeah, I have a hard, I just have some load. And this looks like there were load resistors in the PC, just to keep it from not going out of bounds, so to speak. Some real load power supply do need a load. Uh, 11.95 It's negative, 11.66 And 3.3 should be over here 3.33, that's nice uh, Should have negative 5 maybe on this one, I don't remember Is this, this? Yeah, we have So I think that's all the voltages So now we can hook up it to the actual Soltec uh, slot 1 motherboard Anyway, let's uh, power it on Hopefully I connected the switches up correctly, I had to check the manual. And the horrible CPU fan is now an issue. Put in a PCI car. And it's posing very quickly here, nicely. I'm gonna pull the CPU fan here. Come on. Whatever noise is picked up now should be the PSU. It's not noiseless, but... For a $5 Sunon fan, I ain't complaining. I think we end the first part of the video series here. Because we've done the power supply now, so I figured in the next part we could do um, the graphics card that we're going to use, the TNT2, we're going to finish up that with the fan. And also the CPU, as you can hear, the, the fan is crap. Um, because it's not a standard fan, you have to really mod it if you want to put something else in there. It's doable, you can probably change the bearings. But I want a better cooler, so we're gonna put on a better heatsink and fan and replace it. Because uh, these are the ones, uh, Pension 2's, uh, Salt 1's has like an IGS that goes all the way across. And then we can also see what cache we have. That That is kind of an indication of how well this CPU could overclock. And like I said, the cache is technically it should be cool. There is indentations for that, uh, but there's no pads. Uh, so I think that uh, will be part two, but this is uh, part one, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's over. So thank you for watching and have a nice day. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public lands when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.